Welcome back. Mr. Obama is on record to say that this deal with Iran is the sort of deal that you don't make with only your friends, which implies that obviously there are very stringent uh, tripwires and initiatives put into place should Iran not go along with the commitments that the West wants it to abide by. Uh, Mr. Casey Singh, sir, what are your views? Because there are three things which I feel which are central to keeping Iran under check. One is that in this timeline of 10 to 15 years, Iran should not be able to produce nuclear weapons. The second is that if Iran does intend or try to cheat, then there would be robust penalties put against Iran. And thirdly, that there is a reasonable chance that this could provide a lasting solution to Iran's nuclear ambitions uh, as far as the West is concerned. Do you agree, sir? You see, basically, when the negotiations started with Iran in 2003, as you know, President Bush was the U.S. president, they took a very stiff position. They said not one centrifuge to be allowed to Iran. Uh, in fact, that was Vice President Cheney's remark. But as the negotiations went on, then, of course, President Amdi Najad came in. Uh, they, broke, they broke open the seals which had been put in 2003 and started adding more centrifuges and more elements to their nuclear program. Uh, that is when the sanctions came in, a series of sanctions from the UN and supplementary sanctions from US and their uh, partners in the e European Union uh, continued for the period of MD Najad's presidency. But in the meanwhile, Iran was able to add a number of elements to its nuclear program. Uh, they got uh, a, a, a reactor in Arak, uh, a hard water reactor which could produce plutonium. They got an embedded facility, a facility inside the mountains in Fordo. They added the centrifuges. They were able to produce more enriched uranium. To simplify it, what they had done was that the time they required to break out of low-level enrichment to weapons-grade uranium had been reduced. And therefore, the argument that President Obama has now made, and there I agree with Mr. Abad, that I don't think President Obama would have done this deal had he not realized that in the region today, uh, Iran is critical to containment to both solving the Syrian problem and containing the ISIS. Uh, Saudi Arabia, etc., can only create a problem, but they are no part of the solution. And therefore, Iran is vital because they are the only ones who are able to support the Iraqi government. They are able to go and train the Shia militias. They are the ones who have stopped ISIS in Iraq and are trying to roll it back, besides the Kurds. Right. Mr. Awad, uh, clearly, you know, it's, uh, critics had wanted any time, anywhere inspections in Iran, uh, but that's not been allowed. But whenever the suspicions are high, inspections will take place, more specifically about West Asia and geopolitics. Iran could, once again, become a key player in the energy markets. Iran could provide more oil. There is also the concern that more oil being provided by Iran could upset uh, the oil prices and therefore the markets and oil prices would go further down and therefore uh, this has its own geopolitical implications. But more specifically, Iran vis-a-vis -vis Saudi Arabia. Uh, once Iran begins to emerge out of the shadows once again, who is going to call the shots in the Middle East? Well, I think those who wanted peace in the region. You see, the, the, the issues here are very clearly. For IS, it cannot survive neither in Syria nor in, in Iraq because it's of the multi-ethnicity and the multicultural of the people there. So it can survive only in Jordan and Saudi Arabia. So therefore, I could see and I could foresee that the pressure will be more on the Saudi front because now IS, those whom they have been trained by the Saudis and the Turkish now, they are firing back at them. Therefore, there will be more trouble for Saudi Arabia. So if Iran tomorrow bump more of oil, it is the similar fashion when Saudi were pumping the oil to flood the market when the sanctions were in Iran. So it is just a kind of a you know, vicious cycle where they are applying now on Iran to increase more production. Saudi Arabia will be affected and that has impact on Saudi Arabia. Second, which is more important to us is, you know, the creation of Taliban in Afghanistan was a counter the revolution of Iran. The creation of IS was to counter the crescents or the resistance within that uh, field of Syria, Iran, Iraq and Lebanon against Israeli expansion on the region. Therefore, I think now they have realized that it is time. 
the Iranian has to play the role in solving this problem. And you could see the fallout in Syria, where the American Foreign Secretary of UK have said clearly that Syrian president is part of the solution. It's also the Americans said, the European Union have already said. You could see on Yemen the impact on Yemen from the Iranian point of view. So therefore, there is a kind of reshaping. I would say, again, reshaping of the Middle East. The pressure from the allies of the United States, once the United States say no to its allies, come back, stop the rhetoric, then we can find a solution to the, what will be happening in the next decade. Over the years of sanctions, since India stuck with Iran, there are many companies and many governmental organizations from India benefited with trade from Iran. Figures show that India's trade with Tehran uh, virtually doubled to about $5 billion in 2013-14 itself. And there have been lots of other Indian exports there, in as much as India has also been buying Iranian oil when the rest of the world wasn't. Now that this whole situation is going to change, is it going to pinch us? And to what extent can we hope for more oil from Iran at uh, favorable rates as compared to what we may be getting from elsewhere in the Middle East market? Look, let's be clear about one thing. We will not get oil at favorable rates. Oil is a fungible commodity. It goes into a global pool. Uh, but what happens is when additional oil comes in, as Mr. Abad was saying, it does bring globally the price down. Uh, but there is no label on Iranian oil. Uh, and I don't think today, with sanctions going off, they're going to be selling their oil at a lesser price. Earlier, there was a premium uh, on picking up that oil because it was difficult to pay for it. So Iran may have sold at lower rates. But once the sanctions are off, they're going to be charging the same rate. Secondly, I don't think this oil will come overnight. They have some oil which is in containers, uh, which can come into the market. But their oil production has been gradually coming down over the last 10 years. And that's happened because they don't have technology. They need infusion of technology. So sanctions is only one part. There is also a lowering of production uh, which has occurred over a period of 10, 15 years. So therefore, to start ramping it up for new technology to come in, new companies to come in, it will happen in six months to a year. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, because pumping oil is not like water, then you can suddenly switch it on and off. Uh, it's a complex process when you revive the oil production. That is number one. Secondly, it's level playing field now. So with European companies there, with U.S. companies there, particularly U.S. companies, because Europe was dealing with them even in 2003 and before, whereas American companies have had what was called the uh, ILSA Act, the Iran-Libya Sanctions Act, which was right from the time of the revolution. So U.S. companies will be now there in full force, which was not there earlier. So it's level playing field. We'll have to compete against the rest of the world. Uh, as far as our exports are concerned. So in short, uh, we are going to lose some of the advantages we had until recently. Yes, But certainly. overall, I, it's, it's, it's more gainful for Iran to come back into the mainstream. A number of interesting points once again uh, in our show. And uh, to sum up very quickly, Iran was historically, in a way, the world's first global hegemon and has in the past been a very important country in West Asia and could once again play a very important role in West Asian geopolitics. Uh, this could obviously lead to a certain amount of sectarian strife and rivalries. But Iran continues to be the one credible player that can play a key role to contain the menace of ISIS and has been doing that already even before the sanctions were lifted. There are very stiff and robust penalties that have been put into place should Iran not comply with the agreement and the arrangement. But a point to understand is that it may have delayed Iran's nuclear program by 10 years or maybe 15, but the nuclear know-how is with Iran. And should Iran decide to go nuclear at some stage in its history, it can do that. Finally, as far as India is concerned, India enjoyed certain advantages when sanctions were in place. But now that Iran would enter the global mainstream, maybe in a month or so from now, uh, Iran would obviously be then operating out of a level playing field, and India has to reassess its arrangements with Iran. Thank you very much for being with us on this show, sir. And we'll be back with another episode of Latitude. Until then, good